We're testing how different infill percentages affect waterproofing in 3D prints. To do that, I'll design one simple vase infusion and print it three times, each with a different infill setting, same model, same material, different infill. Then we'll fill them with water and see if they leak. Start by creating a new component called vase. This keeps everything organized. It's the first rule of fusion. Create a new sketch on the top plane and draw a circle with a diameter of 50 mm. That defines the base of the vase. Use extrude to pull the shape up 50 mm and add a 15 degree taper angle to create the flared vase shape. Next, use the shell command. Select the top face and set the inside thickness to 3 mm. That hollows out the body while keeping the bottom solid, which is important for our water test. From the top view, you can see the clean inner surface. The bottom stayed intact when we shelled from the top. Finally, save the design and add a short version note like before export. Saving ensures the latest changes are included when we export the model for 3D printing. Now that the VOS model is done, let's move to Prusa Slicer. Go to File, Import, Import STL and bring in the exported VOS. We'll print three versions, one with 15% infill, one with 50 and one completely solid at 100%. At 15% infill, the print takes about 2 hours and 45 minutes and uses just under 10 meters of filament. At 50% infill, the print time goes up to around 4.5 hours, with almost 12 meters of filament used. That's a big jump for just a denser pattern. When switching to 100% infill, Prusa Slicer warns that the gyroid pattern isn't designed for full density. We switch to rectilinear, which means the infill is built from straight, crisscrossing lines rather than curved wave-like structures. It creates a completely solid interior. Interestingly, the fully solid version actually prints a bit faster, just under four hours and uses about 14 and a half meters of filament. So 100% in fill doesn't always mean longer print time, but it does use the most material. Finally, export the G-code for all three versions so we can move on to printing and see which one actually holds water. I printed all three pots on my Prusa, the same printer I've been using reliably since 2021. It's still running smooth. No cup leaked water after five days so extra infill isn't needed to make a print watertight. That's interesting. Lower infill didn't make the walls more porous. Since all versions were printed at 0.2 mm layer height with the same shell thickness, the infill didn't really matter. It's the outer walls and bottom layers that keep water in, not what's inside. So you can save both time and filament without losing waterproofing, as long as the outer shell is solid and well printed. But this only applies to this shape and size. Taller models with more water pressure could still leak. In those cases, adding more walls or bottom layers helps, while more in fill only adds a bit of extra support if the bottom isn't perfect. If you like practical 3D printing tests and fusion projects, subscribe to the Maker Letters. If you like this test, check out my video This Simple Trick Builds a Perfect Honeycomb Pattern. It's another great fusion project that's quick, smart and fun to print.